Hello, this is Dr. Isacco back for the third video in this series focused on mental health during COVID-19. Again, the first video was focused on the mental health concerns during this time with a particular emphasis on grief during COVID-19. The second video then addressed resilience and coping during COVID-19. Again, with the message being that despite these concerns, we're certainly capable of rising above, bouncing back, being able to um, uh, show positive emotions and positive attitudes and behaviors that help us overcome those concerns. And so uh, video number three here is focused more on mental health resources during this time. Um, again, uh, there's been so much more that's been developed over the last uh, two or three months that we are much better equipped, I think, to deal with the situation than we were whenever it first hit back in March. And so some of this, uh, you might be aware of some of these resources, um, or I might be presenting some new, re new resources for you uh, at this time. And so uh, Regardless, I think there'll be something here for everybody in terms of uh, resources. I cover websites, books, apps, and videos primarily during this section. So uh, most people use apps. Most people um, uh, check websites. And um, a lot of people like to watch videos. And uh, perhaps fewer people are reading books, but there's still some really good books out there that uh, can help you during this time. One thing that I wanted to mention too is that, you know, again, because this is an opportunity to try new things, um, something new that you try might not work. And that's okay. It's, I think it's important to cut yourself a break during this time and to demonstrate what we call in psychology self-compassion. Uh, so for example, you know, I thought, well, during this time, I'm going to uh, try a new hobby to perhaps help with my coping. And uh, I picked woodworking. And so I was going to um, make a desk out of some, some wood that I had around the house. So the last month was an exercise in frustration, <laughs> trying to make this desk. And uh, a month later, I don't think I'm anywhere closer to having a completed desk than I was whenever I started uh, the process a month ago. And so I finally said to myself, you know what? I, was, I started this as a way to kind of get my mind off of things, cope with what's going on, and it's actually having the opposite impact on me. I'm frustrated, uh, I'm getting upset, angry, um, and have these unrealistic expectations on what kind of, of desk I can build. Uh, I'm not a woodworker. Uh, and so I just stopped. said, so, you know what, that was, <laughs> that was an experiment gone wrong. Uh, so I, I patted myself on the back for trying something new, and then I was able to walk away with a clear conscience knowing that I, I tried it, it didn't work out, so on to something new. So one of the things that uh, I've been doing more is, you know, taking my kids on on bike rides and rollerblading around the neighborhood or parking lots, and that's a much better um, uh, way to build community um, with my family. Uh, exercise is really important um, and helps me uh, much better with coping and, and developing positive emotions and stress management and word working. So. Uh, I typically didn't take my kids exercising with me in the past, so that was the new element to the coping. Um, so anyway, I share that story just to kind of give you a little bit of a personal insight into it's okay to try something new. It's okay to, to have some trial and error that's part of the process as well. That's true with uh, trying new coping behaviors as well as some of these resources that I'm about to go over. So let's start with um, websites. Uh, most people surf the internet and um, are probably looking at uh, various news websites, uh, which are just compounding our sense of confusion and anxiety and stress and frustration. So these are more positive websites to go to, to help in our coping efforts and stress management during this time. 
Um, there's the National Center for PTSD, for example. This is a great resource. Um, it has a lot of military specific information, um, but it's, it's widely applicable to other non-military populations as well. Um, this is particularly helpful if uh, trauma is part of your uh, part of a concern that you're dealing with or someone that you that you know and love is dealing with. But it has an array of resources, videos, um, uh, articles, uh, consultation services, lots of great resources in that website. The American Psychological Association has developed a website again. Uh, focused on trauma. This one's a little bit different in that it's, it's more widely applicable uh, and it's specifically related to children and adolescents who might be experiencing traumatic symptoms. And so children and adolescents are not immune to the mental health uh, concerns and consequences of this time. And so paying attention to their mental health is really important. You know, if you're a parent, grandparent, this would be a really good website to go to and get some information on how to facilitate positive communication, how to uh, address any emotional concerns of the child, uh, as well as additional uh, resources and tips there. The website below that um, also has some resources working for, for kids and teens, and so there's two there that, uh, that are really uh, important and really specifically focused. On, on children and adolescents. Here's some additional websites. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna kind of go through some of these. Uh, uh, a lot of these are Catholic specific websites. Um, there's just some people that when we're thinking about mental health and, and psychology, having the faith component is, is, is critical. Um, and so I try to be attuned to the, the faith and mental health integration. And here, a lot of these websites um, have a faith component to it and deal with a lot of the, the concerns that uh, we've been speaking of. So um, if you're looking for ways to reduce stress, I give you an article that gives you 62 ways to better manage stress or 30 ways. So combined, you have 92 ways uh, that you can uh, look at uh, on how to deal with stress. And then actually there's another one below that, eight, eight effective ways to deal with stress from Dynamic Catholic. So let's redo the math again. You now have 100 ways to deal with stress. So if you read those three articles um, and still can't uh, come up with a way to deal with the stress that you're experiencing, uh, I don't know what will help you, okay? Um, but in all seriousness, uh, as you go through those websites, you should be able to identify at least one or two new stress management techniques that can help you in the current situation. And again, um, taking that trial and error perspective, you might want to just uh, give a couple a try, see if they work. If they don't work, hey, no harm, no file. Go back to the list and try something new, okay? Um, the Catholic Education Resource Center has some specific uh, resources focused on anxiety. That's really important. Um, these two websites at the top, Purity is Possible and Integrity Restored are websites that are particularly um, uh, focused on dealing with that avoidant behavior that I referenced in video number one. Uh, and here we're talking particularly about problematic sexual behavior and pornography use. Uh, both uh, websites have a Catholic perspective to that behavior and uh, Purity is Possible provides a free nine self-help modules to better align uh, behaviors with our ideals of what is, uh, what is pure and, and chaste uh, behavior. Integrity Restored, uh, it has um, a seven step model for overcoming pornography use. They have a podcast, they have a blog, they have support groups. They have those specifically tailored for parents, spouses, clergy, uh, men and women. So really a, a broad band uh, website full of, of, of many kinds of resources to help with that avoidant behavior during this time. 
Uh, and then I'll also draw your attention to the website, the bottom of the page, soulsandhearts.com. This is a website that was created by two Catholic psychologists that their whole focus is, is on integrating the faith and psychology. So they have blog posts, podcasts, and other uh, resources focused on wellness from a Catholic perspective. So a great website there as well. Um, a lot of us go to the internet to watch videos, and so videos can be uh, a great way to make uh, the, the, the messages or themes that we're focused on more palpable, more real. Uh, and so here's just a few that um, I've watched over the years that um, I think are, are really pertinent during this time. Uh, you have Dr. Martin Seligman talking about positive psychology. So this is the, the field of psychology focused on flourishing, resilience, positive emotions, um, you know, being able to thrive during difficult and challenging times. So uh, not COVID specific, but certainly applicable to the COVID situation. Dan Gilbert talks about the science of happiness. This is just taking the positive psychology theme a step further and something more specific into uh, happiness. Uh, Brother David Scheidel Rast talks about gratitude. Uh, there's no more positive emotion that is better for one's mental health than expressing gratitude. Um, you know, that could be expressing gratitude to God, it could be expressing gratitude to a family member, a friend to oneself, S taking a moment or moments during one's day to be thankful is, is one of the best ways to um, combat negative thinking, negative attitudes, and negative behavior. So that's a really good uh, message to hear. Um, depression and Catholicism, so by uh, Dr. Aaron Karadi. He's uh, a psychiatrist, actually, and he has written a book about uh, depression from a Catholic perspective. And so the video is him talking about his book and depression uh, uh, from his clinical and research experience. Uh, and then how stress affects the, the brain is a good video just to kind of give you a better sense of the biological mechanisms that are going on in your brain when you feel too stressed. Very eye-opening to get that biological perspective. Um, we all, most of us have a smartphone with apps, so you can, I'm going to move the video box over, so mental health apps that are good right now. There is a specific app called the COVID Coach for, to, to help one cope with the daily stress and to build resilience in response to the COVID pandemic. So uh, it's free, it was developed by our government, um, and so a good resource that you can download right on your app. The other apps here are all also free. Um, there's uh, this one, MindShift, is uh, I draw your attention to that because it's focused specifically for teens and young adults. Um, the article at the bottom gives uh, all, all the apps uh, from the list that I got these ones from, um, but these ones that I listed here are all free. So that's why I listed them uh, on, on this slide. Um, so, uh, all good for stress management, mood training, overcoming negative thoughts that are all really important for the time that we're living in. Here's, a, I'm going to switch my video box back over again. Um, here's three Catholic specific apps that you might consider um, uh, during this time. Covenant Eyes does require a monthly fee or you can pay by the year, but this is filtering software and uh, accountability. Uh, for your electronic devices. Uh, this is specifically meant to uh, increase one's ability to uh, surf the web uh, chastely and with purity. Uh, and so again, whenever you're, you might drift into uh, avoidant behavior, pornography use, Covenant Eyes can help with that. Uh, Exodus 90 is a very popular app that, uh, that's uh, growing in popularity, actually. It, it's meant specifically for Catholic men. Uh, there is a fee to that, but this creates a sense of community because you're, you're, you're part of a small group of men that are all basically trying to be holier. Uh, and what a great uh, app during this time where it increases accountability, increases community and social support while uh, uh, enhancing one's ability to 
uh, be more spiritually disciplined within the Catholic tradition. So I've been hearing more and more people using that app, and so far I have not heard anything negative about it. Uh, and then the other Catholic app here is uh, Halo. It's a relatively new app. Um, it's free to download, but it has some in-app purchases, but it's all meant to help um, you instill a sense of Catholic prayer meditation into your daily life, which can increase uh, one sense of meaning, peace, connection with God and the spiritual, which is so important um, uh, anytime uh, during your life and important now during COVID-19. Several books are worth mentioning. I highlight uh, two at the top and blue that deal specifically with trauma. Uh, these are considered um, the, the Bibles of the trauma literature. Um, and so really good books on um, how to deal with trauma and understand trauma during this time. Uh, there's some additional books that are more Catholic specific. Um, I mentioned The Catholic Guide to Depression by Aaron uh, Karate, that's listed here. Uh, there's a nice book on how parents, pastors, and youth leaders can uh, help teens with stress, anxiety, and depression. That's written from a Catholic perspective. Dr. Greg Popchak, he's a, a noted uh, Catholic counselor, and he is a prolific author, and so he wrote a book, Unworried, A Life Without Anxiety. Not sure if that's possible right now, but you kind of get the picture. I think we're all living with uh, anxiety to some degree or another, but um, I think the, the effort is worthwhile that uh, you can work on anxiety from a Catholic perspective. Um, managing stress with the help of your Catholic faith, uh, another good one again, uh, dealing specifically with stress um, and uh, integrated with uh, one's Catholic faith. I also want to draw your attention to uh, St. Luke's Institute. This is, I think, particularly um, helpful for our clergy members or those in formation for clergy, whether a priest, uh, deacon, other lay leaders or lay ministers. I think St. Luke's Institute uh, is based out of uh, Silver Springs, Maryland, but it has a strong online webinar presence. Um, and they have lots of webinars and, uh, and articles at a reasonable price. Some are free, some are $50. I think the most I've seen is, is some at $50 that are all focused on self-care, stress management, healthy boundaries, um, all geared towards enhancing one's ministry as a Catholic clergy member in the Catholic church. And so, um, they produce new ones uh, as well on a regular basis, and they do have some webinars that are specifically focused on dealing with uh, COVID-19, uh, grief, loss, uh, spirituality, et cetera. So I give you the links there, and I would highly recommend that you um, check out the St. Luke's Institute uh, webinar series uh, and offerings, uh, particularly if you are a uh, clergy member or in formation for clergy in the Catholic Church. All right, so that ends video three on additional mental health resources, and I will be back to wrap up the video series by talking about telepsychology.